top chain is a little bit different. Again, each chain has a little bit of a nuance on how the pins come out. Some got plugs, some don't. Uh, this is Habiset 2520, uh, just a simple pin push. You can see this side of the chain has a head on it. This side doesn't. What we do is we just simply take a drip pin, put it in on the side without the head. Give it a little tap, and this chain, this pin will come right out, and the chain separates. So on mat top chains, it's not as critical where you break the chain. It can be done anywhere on the conveyor. Just locate your pin where you want to push it out, taking your drip pin again, and just remove your pin, and the chain separates. Then to put the chain back in. Just simply mesh your chains together, slide your pin in, lining up all the tabs. Take your hammer and you punch. And again, making sure it's seated all the way into the chain. What we're going to show here is how to break chain. Uh, every chain has a little bit of difference in the, how it's done, but I'm going to show you how to do 879 tabletop chain here. That's a common chain here. So roll it up. You can see the pin in the back of the chain. Take a uh, hammer and a drip pin and just simply pound the pin out. Put the chain back together, take the pin, insert it into the back of the chain. There's a little flat spot that it fits into. And then just simply pound it into place. A little tricky holding it all sometimes. What you do is get it started. I like to use the back side of the, the drip pin. Pound it down flush, but you want to turn the drip pin around and recess your pin a little bit. So it's recessed on both sides, doesn't stick out. So what we're going to show here is how to remove the pin on the chain when it's on the conveyor. We like to do it on the idle end as it gets a little more uh, looseness and a little more area to work uh, than dealing with the motor. So you want to slide the pin under the chain, the, the drip pin, and find the, the pin of the chain and pound it up. To reinstall the chain or hook it back together, it's also nice to work on the sprocket and it gives you a little support. But just slide your pin in the chain, and then this is a, you gotta kind of hold everything together. And I like to use the back side of the roll pin or drip pin to get it started. And then once it's started, you can spin the drip pin back around, finish driving your pin in. And you want to make sure that your pin is, is below the surface of the chain on the side. You don't want your pin sticking out. It'll catch on your uh, splices and on your air strips. 